And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. Well, few things are more awe-inspiring than nature at its finest, and that is definitely the case at the Cosumnes River Preserve about a half hour south of Sacramento, home to hundreds of thousands of migratory birds and a one-of-a-kind experience. And we're here with the wetlands manager, Mariah Gard. Good to see you, Mariah. Thanks for being here. Oh, nature is alive everywhere here. It is, it is. This is one of the most beautiful places in the valley. Well, tell me about it. We're surrounded by birds and water and wetlands everywhere. What are we seeing? Well, here at the Cosumnes River Preserve, this is a thousand acres of managed wetlands. Out here you have seasonal wetland habitat where you find migratory birds during the winter season mainly and those are going to be waterfowl, water birds and shorebirds. Okay, where are they coming from and where are they going? The vast majority of them come from up north, say Canada or, or even higher in the Arctic Circle. They come down here, this is the Pacific Flyway here along the, the coast in California. They come to the Central Valley here at the preserve or other areas and they come down here to overwinter, fatten up, get healthy and rest up so that they can uh, have babies in the spring. So tell me what we're seeing. Name some of these off because every little nook and cranny you look you see wildlife. Right. T turn around here and tell me about some. So out here this is a very typical dabbling duck habitat. It's some wide open waters, shallows. You'll see birds like a uh, coots or the red duck there in the middle. That oh, yeah. is a cinnamon teal. And you hear them. You can hear all the calls, the peeps, the tweets, the quacks. It's filled with birds. We've got northern pintail, we've got shovelers, we've got a wide variety of dabbling ducks right in this area right here. And so can you even begin to say how many different varieties you have here at the preserve? I do know we've got well over 200 species of, of various birds from ducks to shorebirds to songbirds or uh, egrets, herons, and our sandhill cranes. Here in the pond, you might have five or ten different species. And, and this is open to the public. We see people here walking the boardwalk, uh, very popular for photography, people taking pictures. Absolutely. And so what do you think it is about this area that is so special? This area is one of the few remaining wetland and riparian habitats left in California. We've lost over 95% of that sort of habitat due to urban encroachment, agricultural development, human impacts on, on our Great Central Valley. So this is a remnant portion of that sort of habitat and it's a magnet, it draws the birds in. So this is rare? It is, it is. There are not a lot of places out there left in California that look like us. This is the public area, but down there is an area close to the public. Let's go see it. All right. Okay. Well, we found the star of the show, the Sandhill Crane, flying in as we speak. And we also found the Birdman. Good to see you, Mark Reynolds, with Good the Nature you, Conservancy. You're the lead scientist for the Migratory Bird Project. And I am stunned at the size of these cranes, the Sandhill Crane. Tell me about it. Aren't they magnificent? This is one of the largest birds in North America. Really? And we're seeing them flying in right now to um, these cornfields at Staten Island. but. The greater sandhill uh, crane stands about five feet tall. Oh, that's and, tall. Yeah, it has about a seven foot wingspan. So definitely one of North America's largest bird species. So picture Michael Phelps with his arms spread out and that's about the same distance. That's right. They look like dinosaurs. Well, they are dinosaurs. Um, birds are actually the, the living lineage of dinosaurs. Many scientists call them feathered dinosaurs. And they, these cranes, in fact, look very prehistoric and sound like you might imagine um, flying dinosaurs or ancient birds did. They're loud. They're very loud. And I, I think one of the things that's, that's most enjoyable about experiencing um, migratory birds like the cranes is the sounds. And if you can imagine being here a couple hundred years ago, the sounds would have been just fairly deafening. You read the early settlers' accounts, and they talk about how noisy it was in the wintertime in the Sacramento Valley from the birds. It blows my mind that these birds, some of them, go to Homer, Alaska. 
Isn't that amazing? And to think that they, they do that by burning bird fat. So by burning the equivalent of, of chicken fat. That they acquire here. That they acquire here. So it's a very efficient fuel. So here they're feeding on, on some of the waste grain from the corn farming operations here, as well as invertebrates. They turn that all into fat. That lets them do these amazing, uh, miraculous migrations, like all the way from Alaska back to California. And so we're sitting here on top of this levee just to get no pun intended, a bird's eye view of what's going on down here. This area is closed to the public, but the public can come down on the other side, right? That's correct. So we're at the Nature Conservancy Staten Island Preserve here in the Delta. And this is one of the largest corn farms in the Delta. It's huge. The Nature Conservancy acquired it in 1993. It's 9,200 acres, and we manage it primarily to benefit migratory bird species like sandhill cranes. Why corn and cranes? Well, corn is one of the crops that we can use to um, benefit wildlife species. It can be compatibly managed for wildlife benefit. And so um, we can flood it fairly early in the season to provide roosting habitat for cranes, and also the waste grain provides food for them. You know, there is so much nature right in our own backyard. We are right next to I-5. And, and it's, it, you know, I, I've driven by here a million times and I never knew what was going on in our own backyard. Well, I think that's one of the, the most exciting things to, to me about this is that, you know, the world's great migrations are really vanishing before our eyes. And it's one of the great motivators for a group like the Nature Conservancy is to try and, and protect these, these fantastic long distance animal migrations before they vanish. And most people think to experience something like that, you have to go to Africa. You have to go to the Serengeti and see wildebeest. And actually, just a couple hours from the Bay Area, an hour south of Sacramento, you can experience one of the great animal migration spectacles on Earth, right here. Really? On Earth? On Earth. Get out. That, that must really move you, that you get to have that kind of job. Oh, it's fantastic. And I get to work with great colleagues and we do amazing things and it's all for the benefit of, uh, of wildlife and for nature. Well, Mark, that's awesome. So good to be with you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yep, on Rob on the Road.